Hi, I'm Melody Thomas-Scott. Don't go away. Profiles is coming right up. Welcome to Profiles, I'm Tiffany Walker. Today's guest is soap opera legend Melody Thomas Scott, who recently celebrated 25 years in the role of Nikki Newman on the hit daytime drama, The Young and the Restless. Over the past 25 years, soap fans have literally watched her grow up on a show that for many years has been the most watched daytime drama in the world. After a short break, we'll join our host Nikki Burns as he welcomes the beautiful Melody Thomas Scott to Profiles. Welcome back to Profiles. Before starring on The Young and the Restless over the past 25 years, Scott was a Hollywood child star. She made her motion picture debut at age 8 when she was cast by Alfred Hitchcock for the thriller Marnie. By the time she was 13 years old, she was starring in roles opposite such stars as Clint Eastwood, Kirk Douglas, and John Wayne. So let's join our host, Mickey Burns, on location at Astrid and Simpson Sugar Bar in the heart of New York City as he welcomes actress Melody Thomas Scott to Profiles. No, what? I didn't know you didn't know that I was having any of these problems because you think I'm so damn strong. Sweetheart. And I'm not. You always say that I'm so strong. I'm your beautiful strong. Nikki, you said it tonight. Yes, I meant it. And that's the kind of woman that you need. I know that. And that's the kind of woman that you want, so I'm trying to be that. Melody Thomas Scott, welcome to our show Profiles. Thank you. Of course, for our viewers, recently celebrated 25 years in the role as Nikki Newman on the hit soap Young and the Restless. Actually, it's almost 27. Unbelievable. But who's counting? And when I, yeah. And when I, when, I <laughs> when I read that, I said, your fans and viewers of that soap liter literally watched you grow up on that soap. Well, yeah, I was pretty much already grown up, but I like the way you put that. I'll accept that. Sure. <laughs> and the uh, Young and the Restless uh, was the most watched daytime drama in the world. I know that was like for 12 or 14 it years. Still is. It still is unbelievable. Yes. Unlike many of your contemporaries in the soap world, you started your career, I read, at age three, doing commercials on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. Do you remember some of the commercials that you, you worked in? Oh, crazy things. Um, Plockman's mustard, Clorox, bleach, Scott tissue, Rice Krispies. You, you, did, you did them all. all. Yeah, everything. And then you also were a child star and made your motion picture debut at age eight. I was eight. When you were cast by Alfred Hitchcock yes. as Tippi Hendren's, uh, I guess. I played Tippi Hendren as, as, a, as a, child, a child, the young uh, Marnie. Do you remember working with Hitchcock and what was, it, what was it like working with him? Remember it very clearly. Um, probably because I was so terrified of him. <laughs> um, An he, opposing, he was a very, yeah. you know, impressive uh, guy and to me being only eight years old I, I needed a little more than he was used to giving he never smiled he breathed loudly and mm. and you just had the sense of oh, I better please him and and if you didn't please him oh, you, you're just devastated because I'm a, I'm a young kid it was my first film and I so, guess years later when you look back and realize the significance of well, that experience exactly. it probably got at the time much larger. I had no idea that no. Alfred Hitchcock was guy. anything more than the director. Yeah, yeah. he was the director. <laughs> but um, later on, uh, I, I was not impressed at all when I worked with John Wayne or mm -hmm. Clint Eastwood mm -hmm. or all of these mm -hmm. things. That took years for me to finally look back and say, wow, that was pretty exciting. Sure. But I, I read somewhere that life wasn't always that easy for you in that you had a rough childhood. Mm. Uh, your mom and dad, uh, you grew up you, without your mom and dad in that you live with your grandma. Correct. And I know that wasn't easy uh, for you. And on top of that, I read somewhere that you had, you've been fighting panic attacks for most of your life. Does that still continue? No. Thank goodness. Um, I, I think that those stemmed a lot from the situation that I was in as a child. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I've never really talked about it, so I, I finally grew out of them and with the help of therapy. Um, I'm okay now. I did my time in therapy. Uh, I know that uh, you experienced them most of the 25 years while you did this soap, but the other cast members were, pretty, were not 
aware of that this was going on okay. with you. How did you hide it from them all these years? I don't know. It's not, it's not the type of thing that you want to share with anybody. I remember being in my dressing room, curled up in a ball on the floor, um, unable to breathe, crying, wanting to be dead, and they're calling me on the speaker, Melody to the set, Melody to the set, and I, I somehow had to just find a way to dry my tears and get out there and do the scene. Mm. Um, I just, I didn't want to share that with anybody. I guess it takes a while before you can even talk about it. Sure. Well, well you talk about it today, and, and by you talking about it, others who are experiencing these panic attacks may yeah. be able to um, be back, helped by that. And back then, this was years ago, there, there were no medications. Mm -mm, it, no. You were just stuck. You went to therapy. If it helped, it helped. If it didn't, that was it. So fortunately today, there are so many other options. Moving on. At age 13, as you mentioned before, you starred with Clint Eastwood in Beguiled. Yes. During that movie, I read something about you had a needle of some sort. Oh. And, 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 <laughs> and, and, and for some reason, I guess kids will be kids, uh, you actually stuck him with the needle, and to yeah. this day he doesn't know that no, happened. No, he does know now. He does because, know. Because um, I finally confessed last year. <laughs> I, I was at a publicist uh. guild luncheon where he was receiving outstanding humanitarian. He, he was receiving <laughs> the big award, yeah. and yeah. I was presenting it. Oh. And um, so during my speech, I started throwing in little tidbits, and I looked over at Eastwood to see if he was remembering what I was saying, and I could tell by his steely eyes. He, yeah. he remembered very well. And I told the rest <laughs> of the room the story. When we were doing The Beguiled, yeah. 1970, I'm mm -hmm. 13 years old, Civil War, we're down on location in um, Louisiana. And part of the story is that Clint Eastwood unfortunately dies at the hands of all of these women. Mm -hmm. So finally the deed is done. He is dead and we're shooting the scene where we're literally sewing this canvas cloth around his body which is what they did back in those days yeah. and we yeah. had very authentic props. I had a real Civil War needle that was very very long and thick and my position was down by his feet. His character had already had one leg chopped off by us, so they had yeah. to dig a hole for one of his legs to be in so that the, the canvas looked yeah. like he was yeah. missing a leg. So I had to, to this day, I don't know why I did it. There we all are. Geraldine right. Page is down at one end. We have this fabulous cast of people, and I'm sewing away, sewing away. And I, I just kept looking at his leg there in that hole. I saw his foot, and for some reason, I just took, when no one was looking, I took that needle and I just went wow. And of course he leaps out, leaps out of the hole, screaming, my God, there's a spider, I've been bitten, there's something in there. Everybody's rushing and hurrying, carrying on, my God, Mr. Eastwood's been bit. And I just sat there. <laughs> <laughs> terrible, terrible, I, bad seed. I, I don't know why I did it. But anyway, I yeah. confessed all that last year uh, at this award show. and. Um, and he remembered it very well. I'm sure he'll never forget it. <laughs> and I think I'm forgiven. I think. I am far from perfect, Sharon. But what you did to those kids, you put your own selfish needs ahead of theirs. You used them to further your sick obsession with Victor. All right, all right. You know what? Shut up. Don't tell me to shut up. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with much more profiles after these important messages. Welcome back to Profiles, I'm Tiffany Walker. In 1999, Melody Thomas Scott garnered an Emmy nomination for Outstanding Lead Actress. As luck would have it, that's the same year that Susan Lucci of All My Children finally won her Emmy in the same category. Now back to Mickey Burns with the talented Melody Thomas Scott. But he can't do them if he's locked away in a cold, empty cell, denied the right to utilize his talents. What a waste that would be. Shortly after working with Eastwood, you were also directed by some famous people, Kurt Douglas in The Posse mm -hmm. and John Wayne in The Shootist. And why I mention that is that was his last film. It was his last film. Um, actually, Don Siegel, who also did The Big Isle and Dirty mm -hmm. Harry, was the director mm -hmm. of The Shootist. But it was Mr. Wayne's last film, which we were aware of. We knew that he was He wasn't well sick. at that point. Right. Yeah. I'll never forget meeting him. He stepped out of his trailer 
Huge. Bigger than life. Famous. Just exactly how you would think. And yeah. he threw his big bear hand yeah, out to yeah, me yeah. and shook it. And you, you just couldn't help but walk away with stars in your eyes thinking, wow.